Microphone fail. What was really said? Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. You have reveled in Harry's wife having the blunder of seeking to take a microphone at the recent Kevin Costner fundraiser only for the lady in purple, who has been afforded hero status among certain groups, gripping hold of it and not letting her take it, thus causing wounding to Harry's wife and causing her to then go floundering across the stage, not really knowing what to do. I provided you with a detailed analysis of what was actually happening as a consequence of that failed microphone grab and the aftermath, so you understand precisely what's occurring, why Harry's wife behaved as she did, how it impacts upon her, and therefore sheds light on her behaviour. As always, whenever Harry's wife does anything which relates to somebody else, either in person, in text message, by telephone, by Zoom, or she's contemplating that, the effect of this is that she will end up subconsciously seeking the prime aims. She must control those around her. Most of the time, she will look, again subconsciously, to draw fuel from people, and some of the time she will seek character traits and residual benefits. She doesn't know that she's doing this. She doesn't consciously think, I need to control people, I need to get fuel from them. It happens in the background, governed by her narcissism. And as I've explained for you, there are instances where her narcissism doesn't come up to proof. It managed to get her onto the world stage. She was hugely fortunate to have been able to ensnare the dim-witted ginger prince so that he fell foul of her machinations. In actual fact, where she should have got to is someone less well-known, but she hit the jackpot. Her narcissism, if it had a voice, would have gone, Fuck me! I can't believe it! We've landed a prince of the realm! What be fucking do? Before we know it, we'll be saying, It broke my necklace! And we'll be asking, Do you want a fucking medal? The fact is, her narcissism hit pay dirt when she managed to get hold of Harry, because this enabled her to suddenly enter the stratosphere. She gained global recognition. She had access to wealth, to networks. She was able to have access to the royal family, the most well-known royal family on the globe. And this all came courtesy of a handily packaged ginger person who was easy enough to control. It really was a glorious result for her narcissism. But as you all know, she then managed to completely bugger it up. Yes, and that was because her narcissism wasn't evolved enough to recognise that she stood to gain more by harnessing the royal family and working with it in the way that other narcissists have done, but instead decided that she would be the one to go elsewhere. Because, of course, as is always the case with Harry's wife, she knows best. Even though there's no tangible objective evidence to support the proposition that she knows best, it's not like she's got an absolutely glorious groundbreaking career behind her, oodles of qualifications, successful businesses, many people wanting to know precisely what her thoughts are on matters before she became infamous. She hasn't got any of that track record. No, instead, she simply believes that she's amazing and therefore that must mean that she is. She is simply a legend in her own lunchtime. And this has created the beast that we see today, that she got so, so lucky that she was hooked up with Harry, and that he, as a consequence of feeling lonely, feeling vulnerable as a consequence of the way that his life had gone so far with vis-a-vis -vis the loss of his mother and his inability to find somebody to stay with him as a partner and the fact that he was susceptible to an individual that would give him lashings of spicy poontang, he fell in love with her. 
There's no doubting that he loves his wife, but it's completely backfired, and whilst he can't see a lot of it still because he's caught in the fog of his own emotional thinking and her manipulations, it's apparent to so many other people. But she doesn't care about that. All her narcissism cares about is enabling her to control him, which then enables her to control so many other people, and then provides her with access to the other aspects of the prime aims. Now we've seen her as she circles the drain and the downward spiral unfolds. We've seen the ways in which she's royally messing it up, and it becomes all the more entertaining with the disclosures about how she's elbowed her way into events courtesy of the WME connections, rather than based on her own gravitas and status, combined with the fact that more and more people are either simply sick to the back teeth of seeing her or actively dislike her, the end is looming. But we saw the ridiculousness of her behaviour at the Kevin Costner fundraiser where she sought to grapple the microphone away from the lady in the purple robes. But what was actually said? Well, as a consequence of the reach of the Ultra and some fantastic stereophonic equipment, we've been able to find out what was actually said as Harry and Harry's wife entered the stage past lady in the purple robe and made their way to the presentation area. For the first time, you can hear the words that were actually exchanged. And now, I'm going to share this with you. Here it comes. Oh, hello. Am I playing polo? Oh, microphone. Gimme, gimme. No fucking way. Piss off. Oh, I'll grab a powder egg. Give her the mic, mate. My pink pods are still tingling. No, no way. She's a grifting bore. So now you know precisely what went down. But it doesn't end there. No, as a consequence of this fantastic stereophonic equipment, we've been able also to hear the content of a short exchange between a Polish competitor who has a Yorkshire accent, Prince Harry, and Harry's wife, lifted from the Evictus Games. It's quite enlightening, so pin your ears back and have a listen to this also. Harry, lad, you've buggered it all up with this witch. Aye, you, that's who I'm talking to. <laughs> but I'm his witch, aren't I? An enlightening look, I'm sure you'll agree, into the world of Harry and Harry's wife, hearing what's really being said to them, by them, and around them. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening. <laughs>